Welcome to our next mini tour. We're starting today inside Bath Guildhall Market, which is our covered market full of lots of lovely independent traders selling all sorts of things, including food and drink, such as the Guildhall Deli just behind me here. This is owned as a family business by Miranda and Sarah, their sisters, and they are really popular with lots of local, especially office workers. Uh, they come in and they buy their lunches here. They sell a nice range of hot and cold snacks, both sweet and savoury. But the Guildhall Market is a historical structure. We've had a market for hundreds of years. The original market on this site was built in the late 18th century, and most of what we can see today is as a result of a 19th century restoration. But there are still some parts of the original 18th century market, including this table beside me here. This is called a nail, and it was a bartering tool. And we'll tell you the whole story of the nail on our tours, but the pre basic premise is that if you couldn't agree a price with the trader that you were purchasing from, this is where you would come to agree what price you would eventually pay. But let's head around the corner here and see some more of the traders in the market today. These guys are actually all semi-permanent, so they're here most of the time. And uh, over here is uh, Nibbles. Nibbles is the oldest cheesemonger in Bath. We actually have three cheesemongers in Bath, but these guys have been here actually nearly 43 years now. It's owned at the moment by Stefan. He's had it for about 17 or 18 years. He's from Northern France, and he sells a lovely range of artisan cheeses, both from the UK and across Europe. And then just on the opposite side over here, we have uh, Gillards, who are tea merchants. And these guys specialize in blended teas. Some of the blends are of their own recipes. They also sell coffees. And Gillards is a really old tea merchant. They've been here since the 19th century. Previously a different shop, they moved here more recently, but they still have some of the old shop fittings and fixtures on their store here. But we'll head out the back of the Guildhall Market. And we're heading towards the river. And actually, this was the area where we used to have our city wall. And you can see evidence of the city wall just in the hardware shop here. You can see on the floor there. And we'll paint the context of that part of the wall to you if you come on one of our tours. And I'll actually mention the city wall again later towards the end of our tour. But this is where we come out onto the Grand Parade, near to the riverside. And along here, we do have some restaurants. We have a uh, Turkish restaurant and also the Italian steakhouse joy us back there. But we're going to head over to Bridge Street. And on the corner here is Bath Victoria Art Gallery. And this actually is free admission, well worth a visit if you're in Bath. They're closed at the moment. We're just coming out of lockdown. A lot of the restrictions have now been eased, so non-essential uh, retailers are allowed to open. Uh, but of course, a lot of the food places have been open for a while anyway and across the road here is one of our new friends this is Cortado this used to be a deli uh, but these guys got hold of this uh, only a year or two ago it's owned by an Argentinian couple and they retail Argentinian style sweet and savoury uh, treats including empanadas which have become really popular in the city they make them more fresh on the site and they fill them with all sorts of different interesting fillings and they also have an Argentinian baker who is based locally and she bakes lots of really lovely sweet treats for them to sell there. They're next door as well to another bakery called uh, Nutter & Co. These guys are a company based in Cardiff where they have a few shops and they're a Portuguese business and they specialise in Portuguese custard tarts and they sell them warm from here and they do often have queues outside. But we're going to head across to Pulteney Bridge now and we just need to cross the road here. There's no traffic so we can go straight across. And Pulteney Bridge uh, was constructed by Robert Adam. Now, he was a Scottish architect, and he was better known for his interiors. In fact, he didn't build an awful lot of bridges, so this is rather unique. But he'd been on a trip to Florence, where he'd been really influenced by the Ponte Vecchio, which is famous for having the shops on both sides. And this really echoes that. And you can see we have shops across both sides. Actually, some of these are cafes and tea rooms. And if you go into them and sit down at the back, when we can do that from May onwards, then you'll get some nice views across the River Avon. Now, coming onto the other side of the bridge, we're back on dry land. And along here, we do have a number of independent restaurants. But actually, coming up ahead of us is the end of Great Pulteney Street. Now, we're not going to go as far as Great Pulteney Street today. We'll cover that on another tour. But you can just see in the foreground, 
ahead of us. That's the Laura Place fountain. It's not working today, but it does often have water running through it. Uh, we'll explore that on another one of our mini tours as we head to the end of Great Courtney Street another time to visit the Holborn Museum in Sydney Gardens. But we'll head down here to visit another one of the new businesses with premises in Bath called Sugarcane Studio. And they're over there on the right hand side of the road where you can see the green frames and sign. And this is a business owned by Fang and her husband Neil. And these guys sell some really nice sweet treats. Um, and just come off the road there for a second to sit with that. Um, but uh, these guys uh, have got a tiny little space, so they are open for you to go in and sit down when we're allowed to open, but they only have two or three tables in there. But they've got some really beautifully um, styled cakes and things like macaroons. Um, they used to have a store in Bath Green Park Market, uh, the Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings, but then they got this at the end of last year. Now we're going to continue on from here. We'll cross the street again. I'm going to take you into part of Bath that is really not seen that much. We're going to go into the bowels of the Courtney Bridge into the arches, which is rather dark and gloomy. And actually, there's a couple of businesses down here that I would like to share with you. Firstly, on the left-hand side, which is all boarded up at the moment, is Opium. Now, this will be open again eventually when we're allowed to go and sit down inside bars. This is a cocktail bar and Opium gets really, really busy. It's a lovely, lovely place. It's a very much a chill out place. It's quite small, but they have an amazing cocktail menu. And actually, you wouldn't really know it was here because it's all boarded up at the moment. But the doors are there behind these boards here. And when you go inside, the bar is just there. And as you get further back into the bar, the ceiling comes down lower and they end up having these mattresses on the floor that you can literally just chill out on and, and lie back as you enjoy your cocktails. But this is where we really get underneath Courtney Bridge. And I always feel like coming down here is a little bit like walking into part of a Charles Dickens novel, sort of maybe Oliver Twist or something like that. And uh, it's still rather dark and gloomy. And actually behind these walls are the basements effectively of the shops that we saw up on Courtney Bridge. But there is a restaurant up here and actually, they do have an entrance just off the bridge to Herd, which is a steak restaurant. Uh, you can't really tell today because obviously it's closed up still at the moment. But this is a, they have a lovely menu. It's one of my favourite steak restaurants in Bath. It's actually really light inside and it's a really nice atmosphere. Uh, you can either come in from here or you can come in there entrance up on the bridge. And as we come out from underneath the bridge, we've got the boater on the left hand side. This used to be one of my closest pubs in Bath. So I always thought of it as my local and it's got a huge beer garden at the back so of course they're open at the moment loads of space to sit out they've got a marquee in case the weather gets a little bit awkward uh, but they do do food in there and it's just a really nice atmosphere especially on days when there's rugby speaking of which the rec or the recreation ground is just a little further ahead of us here and that's where bath rugby are based and actually if you continue along the footpath here then this will eventually lead you into the village of Whitcomb. It's only about a five to ten minute walk and it's, it's a suburb of Bath but it really feels connected to the city centre and it's full of lots of lovely independent traders. And then you can actually come out the other side of Whitcomb and you're practically at the Bath Spa train station. But we're going to finish on the riverside just ahead of us here with a nice view across the river and of Pulteney Bridge. And the weir in the foreground. Now the weir here dates from the 1970s but there has been a weir at this point on the river since the medieval period and it really just regulates the flow of water and helps prevent flooding which we don't really suffer from that much anymore you can see the bridge up to the right there uh, there is some scaffolding in the corner that you might be able to see and that's because a truck crashed into the wall up there a couple of years ago so they're still in the process of restoring that but it is moving along nicely and then the colonnade on the other side of the river has tons of space under it and they were going to turn all that into public space a few years ago, including a series of restaurants and places where you could just go and enjoy the riverside. Unfortunately, it never transpired, and we don't exactly know what's going to happen to that in the long term. But there's tons of space there. You can see the bus going past on Grand Parade above. Now, directly opposite me, you might just be able to see there's a little archway with a footpath beyond it. Just beside the archway is a scaffolding tower. It might be slightly difficult to see on the screen, 
but that was the old route up to the old eastern gate in the city walls. In fact, just beyond the archway, you might be able to see a chink of light and the shadow in the foreground of that light is the, is the east gate itself. It really is the only part of the medieval city walls that you can reasonably see at street level. Um, and we'll tell you the full story about that on our tours. And we often do come down here on some of our tours, which I hope you can join us on very, very soon.